John Stagger. Show. The feminization of education. There just are not enough men teaching boys in grade school and even in high school. I went to an all-boys school, and every teacher I had was a male. I had a Latin teacher who, he'd say, where's your homework? If you didn't have it, he'd tell you to go to the back of the room and do knee bends. See, a woman teacher wouldn't do that. Nobody complained. Nobody went home and told their parents. There were plenty of men around, and we were pretty well schooled in what it means to have responsibility back when men were actually, you know, men. The John Steigerwald Show, weekdays at 5 on AM 1250. The Answer. I have a request. Listen, if you're going to make an idiot of yourself by saying or doing something really stupid, do us a favor around here. Don't do it on a Thursday. I'll explain in a minute. But first... And now, it's time for The Jerk of the Week, starring John Steigerwald. Yeah, see, we give out the uh, Windows R Us Jerk of the Week Award every Friday here, so if you wait until Thursday to be a jerk... Uh, it just might make it harder for us to give you the award because, you know, we don't want to focus on you two days in a row. But, sorry, uh, there just wasn't anybody more qualified for the award than Katie Hill, the now former congresswoman. Uh, she resigned on Sunday and gave her last speech on the floor. She's the woman who had pictures of her naked self brushing the hair of a staffer splashed all over the Internet. Now, you might think that uh, that qualifies her for Jerk of the Week, but nope. It was what she said in her speech when she blamed everybody but herself. I am leaving now because of a double standard. I'm leaving because I no longer want to be used as a bargaining chip. I'm leaving because I didn't want to be peddled by papers and blogs and websites used by shameless operatives for the dirtiest gutter politics that I've ever seen and the right-wing media to drive clicks and expand their audience by distributing intimate photos of me taken without my knowledge, let alone my consent, for the sexual entertainment of millions. I'm leaving because of a misogynistic culture that gleefully consumed my naked pictures, capitalized on my sexuality, and enabled my abusive ex to continue that abuse, this time with the entire country watching. I'm leaving because there is only one investigation that deserves the attention of this country, and that's the one that we voted on today. Yeah, I'm a little conflicted on exactly what qualified her for the award more, saying there's a double standard, implying that it wouldn't have happened to a man, or blaming the right-wing media. Whatever, former Congresswoman Katie Hill is this week's Windows or Us Jerk of the Week. The Jerk of the Week is brought to you by Windows R Us, Pittsburgh's premier exterior replacement company. Expert repair and replacement for windows, roofs, siding, doors, gutters, and downspouts. Why pay double? Visit windowsruspittsburgh.com. And by the way, I could have uh, awarded it to a bunch of people in the media for feeling sorry for her and standing up for her, but there would have been too many of them. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to revisit the story of the seven-year-old boy down in Texas whose mother wants to turn him into a girl. And we're going to talk to a former transgender woman who's now a man who has met the kid and his dad and given them some advice. Stick around. living in a very successful, affluent society for many people. Yet, it's also true that there are people that are being left out of that. And how do we reach those people? Joel Gilliam, Executive Director at Light of Life Rescue Mission on Pittsburgh's North Side. So part of what Light of Life does is that we help them in our education and employment program to connect with workforce development, to look at the skill gap that exists. And so we're partnering with Places like the community college, we're taking our clients, once they are clean and they are ready to move on, now they can actually get credentialed in an area where they can be hired to work with uh, UPMC or Google or, or Amazon or these other places. And so it provides an on-ramp for those who are left out to get back involved in society. Help someone else find their comeback story. To become a monthly partner or make a one-time gift, visit lightoflife.org slash give today. lightoflife.org slash give. Like the rest of us, you're probably tired of all those annoying sales calls to your home telephone number. Now, there's a solution. Ouroldnumber.com will block those pesky robocalls from getting through. And most live sales calls will hang up. So how does it work? Callers to your home telephone number will hear a personalized greeting from you. 
The caller selects the family member they wish to reach, and the call is immediately forwarded onto the family member's cell phone. There's no equipment to buy, there's nothing to install, no long-term contracts. It's still your phone number and remains in directory assistance. The service is only $9.99 per month, and you can eliminate your landline connection and save money. Now, calls to your home phone number can reach any member of the family wherever they are and get rid of those annoying sales calls. OurOldNumber.com. It's just $9.99 per month. Go to OurOldNumber.com to learn how you can get started blocking sales calls today. That's OurOldNumber.com. OurOldNumber.com. You'll be glad you did. The U.S. is projected to add 10 million jobs over the next five years. But will today's high school students be ready for the jobs of tomorrow? The future of our country is in high school, and politicians are deciding the future right now. Text FUTURE to 225568 to learn more from XQ. Message and data rates may apply. You started your business with nothing but a great big idea. They told you it couldn't be done, but that just made you work harder to prove them wrong. Now look at you, ready to take on the world. Speed Pro Pittsburgh South gets where you're coming from when they said they wanted to create great big graphics for great big ideas like yours in less time than anyone else. They were told it couldn't be done. Speed Pro Pittsburgh South just smiled and said, oh, yeah, watch us. When you need a large format printing partner who can provide high quality visual graphics in stunning detail, from trade show displays to outdoor signs, 3M brand vehicle wrap for your fleet, to window graphics, banners, and decals. Speed Pro Pittsburgh South can handle most jobs in two days or less and can roll with last minute change ups without breaking a sweat. Who says it can't be done? For a free quote, visit speedpropghsouth.com. At the Original Mattress Factory, we don't chase trends. We focus on one thing, quality. We only use the highest quality materials to build our mattresses and box springs and we put all of our products through the ringer, testing new designs and materials at our test center in Cleveland, Ohio. If a new feature or technology doesn't offer a true benefit, we don't put it in our products. At the Original Mattress Factory, our focus is on what makes a great mattress, not a great markup. Visit OriginalMattress.com to learn more. At the Original Mattress Factory, our mattresses and box springs aren't just American-made, they're hometown-made. Our products are hand-built one at a time in local factories, using only the highest quality materials. And each of our employees is also an owner. So when you purchase from the Original Mattress Factory, you're not only getting a quality mattress at a factory direct price, you're also supporting your local economy. Visit an Original Mattress Factory location near you to see what Hometown Made is all about. This is the John Stacker Show on AM 1250 and FM 92.5. The answer. Well, the, uh, the story appeared last week about a seven-year-old uh, boy whose mother had been raising him as a girl since he was three, uh, despite the fact that the, the kid's father, who's divorced from the mother, is sane and, you know, tried to prevent it from happening. Well, last Monday, a jury uh, ruled in favor of the mother and said that the father had no say in the matter. But last Thursday, a judge overruled the verdict and said that the father, James Younger, was Equal conser should have equal conservatorship uh, over the boy and his twin brother who's being raised as a boy. Last week, we replayed an interview we did several months ago with Walt Heyer, who was a uh, transgender woman, is now back to living as a man. He counsels people whose lives have been ruined by unnecessary gender surgery. Walt joins us now. Walt, thanks for being here again. Yeah, nice to be on. So, um, how did you get involved in this uh, situation down in Texas? Uh, last uh, October, I was speaking at a conference uh, in Texas, and uh, the father and a friend approached me uh, at the conference I was at and asked me if I would um, try to figure out a way to help them. And so I wrote an article. In fact, it was the very first article that was published in the Federalist in November of 2018 uh, that got like a million views and then it raised some $60,000 for his um, legal care uh, to help him fight the case. So um, I became involved and I spent time uh, with uh, the father and the two boys and um, I kind of stayed close to that and I've written three total articles on, on the case. So the mother, uh, you know, the boy doesn't live um, his life as a girl, even when he's with his mother. The mother only dresses him as a girl and sends him to school as a girl, Luna. 
And um, that word, that name Luna, actually comes from um, the mother's other two uh, kids from another marriage. Um, actually, they're in vitro kids. She's never had any uh, kids any other way except in vitro. And the kids called James a lunatic. And so she took that word lunatic and used the name Luna to call the boy a girl. So there's there's a little bit of information about how she um, derived the name uh, Luna. It came from lunatic. That's a heartwarming story. Um, so yes, <laughs> how so? Uh, I I mentioned that you were a uh, you you became a transgender woman, and then reversed back to being a man. Complicated thing we talked about when we had you on the show, and I, I re-ran that interview last week here. It's kind of a fascinating, interesting story. Can you just give us a quick uh, Cliff uh, Notes version of, of your story and how that makes you able to relate to this seven-year-old kid and other people going through this? Yeah, I was a four-year-old boy who had a grandmother that did pretty much the same thing to me. I was a girl uh, when Grandma dressed me as a girl at Grandma's house, but uh, like James, James is a boy when he's with his mother, so I was a boy when Grandma didn't have me and I was home with my parents. So the similarities are quite uh, striking. So, um, But the, the problem is any time a parent, adult, anybody cross-dresses a young four, five, six, seven, eight-year-old boy, you are causing them to have serious psychological difficulties. You're planting the seed of gender confusion. I call it child abuse from my own personal experience and from the people that I've worked with. No one should ever affirm, suggest, assist, or help a boy dress as a girl or a girl dress as a boy. Um, that is really harmful. And uh, to further that and do anything like hormone blockers or anything is medical malpractice in my view as well as um, abusive. So uh, we're, we're on a, a, a track here where it's not going to last. Um, this whole thing is going to collapse. This is total insanity. And I'm getting uh, two, three, four people a day calling me about their kids or writing me about their kids. And um, they're finding out that um, none of them um, need to have hormone blockers. None of them need to change genders. In fact, two in the last few weeks, uh, changed genders at 18 when they legally could surgically, and both of them within one year are regretting it and want their body parts back that were taken off. So this is, this is why it is critical that we don't allow this practice to continue. We have to stop it from going on. This is abusive. It's uh, going to harm these people for life. They won't be able to have children, these two people that are speaking of and so um it's tragic and uh, the thing is uh walt i you know i've had you on the show here twice and i've talked about it uh, actually three times if you count the time i replayed the interview last week because this stuff is this stuff really bothers me a lot um because I, what i see happening uh, not just this case uh, down in texas which caught everybody's attention but i see so many things being changed uh, where uh, and and people are taking it uh, seriously and not even batting an eye when someone uh, tells them what pronouns that uh, you know you introduce yourself and then you say you have to uh, I mean colleges are doing this where you're supposed to uh, let people know which pronouns you prefer um, and doing yeah. I, I, how many people uh, are, are are we trying to accommodate here what percentage of the population uh, are we actually trying to accommodate with all this insanity. You know, people who there actually people are, who want to change genders change. or think they do. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I don't think anybody knows the number, but it's very small, one, one or two percent um, that we're dealing with. So uh, let, let's be charitable and say five percent, which it's not. It's not near that. That means 95 percent of us know that um, these people are struggling. Uh, but uh, helping them is not helping them by uh, using different pronouns. A, a friend of mine, when I switched to being Laura, I told him he had to use pronouns. And my friend Bill says, why don't I just call you wacko? And, you know, <laughs> as I look back on that, 
uh, that seemed like the appropriate <laughs> pronoun as I look back on it. It was perfectly uh, clear to me. Right. Well, the thing is, Walt, you are, I don't know how anybody could have more credibility on this subject than you, uh, having, you know, gone uh, that direction and then headed back. Um, how much, um, how, how much attention do you get from people in the media who who are uh, seem to be seem to be celebrating this and promoting this, uh, and and I think also adding to the problem. By the way, well, that's a that's a great question. I am quite popular in every other place in the world except the United States. Really, I've done doc- documentary films in Russia, the UK. Um, I've been invited to speak in Santiago, Chile, Hong Kong, um, Australia, New Zealand, wow. Canada, uh, and I've done uh, a dozen documentary films, but they're all from outside the U.S. So uh, they don't like me here in the U.S. very much. Um, everyone else uh, is really um, quite quite happy to have me on their shows. I just did a documentary uh, out had people here for the Daily Mail, which is going to go out to 60 million viewers uh, on TV, I think, next week. So, um, like I I usually say to people, and I'm colluding with the Russians, because they've done (laughs) about four documentary films, Um, they actually uh, want me on, they actually allow me to speak about scripture uh, when I'm doing Russian documentary shows. Um, They're not opposed to that at all. But uh, Putin, I asked one of the producers... Why uh, are they allowing me on so frequently in Russia? And the producer told me, well, Putin is very concerned about these issues destroying the families there. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> happening here. Uh, and and, and well, yeah. how, how much, uh, I mean, this is, I, I, I remember... Richards, you know, I was pro- I was pretty young, and and uh, uh, it was a he who trains uh, train uh, transitioned to a she and tennis. became a tennis player, yeah. a pro tennis player, um, and uh, and and uh, uh, he was he she was kind of a freak because it was just uh, it wasn't made public because he was the only one anybody knew about, um, but now. It's it's not only um, well publicized, but it's 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 now reached the point that it's glamorized. And how do you reverse that? Yes. Well, you know that's going to take a media that's willing to um, unglamorize it. I was on uh, one CNN show, and that ended my career <laughs> because I didn't glamorize it. So uh, you know, ended it on CNN anyway. So. You know, there's, uh, let me tell you this. There is a lot more people who know what you and I are speaking about today is, is the truth and that we shouldn't be doing this stuff to young children. Uh, you know, people sort of look the other way if adults like Renee Richards does it. But Re- Renee Richards, by the way, wrote an article, I think, in the New York Times and said, I have regrets about doing this. I don't recommend it for anybody. Really? So... Yeah, so uh, most of the people uh, who go through this process between 8 and 15 years after surgery uh, regret doing it. And so uh, they're they're 18 times more likely to commit suicide after they transition than if they didn't. So um, it's it's an unhealthy uh, to the psyche. It's emotionally draining. And socially, it's disastrous. So I, I think that's an important point that they they're they're 18 times more likely to commit suicide after the transition, um, because I would guess that a lot of people are um, accommodating kids who think they want to do this because they're afraid they might commit suicide if they don't. But it's actually by doing it. You're not helping your son or daughter. You're actually increasing the possibility, the chances, I should say, that that they're going to commit suicide. Yeah. If you encourage a person toward changing genders, you're actually contributing to the to two or three elements. One, their psychological instability, their emotional instability, their depression, and the likelihood of them attempting suicide or being successful at suicide. If they were just had the courage to affirm the people in the gender that uh, they they were found at during conception, because that's when it happens and it's not changeable. And then, if a person is struggling 
sit down with them and find out why they're struggling. Learn the why about what it is they don't like about who they are. Were they sexually abused? Were they emotionally abused? Did someone tell them that they're ugly or did they have someone that hurt them badly? We, these are all things that I've, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of people over the last 10 years. Every last one of them that I've worked with has been able to tell me directly what happened to them that caused them to not like who they are and decide it was better to try to become somebody else. So if we can find out what happened and what the issue is, we can prevent people from going through unnecessary hormone uh, therapies and reassignment surgery. This totally ruins a person's life. But see, here's what bothers me about it, Walt. Uh, we had a story here a week or so ago um, that um, I um, a women's hygiene product, um, yes. menstrual you know product, yeah. um, uh, called Always. They had on their boxes. They had the female, uh, and the, the 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 what's it? The character for female. You know, a circle with a cross. Yeah. And they removed yeah. it. They removed it because it's not only women who can have periods. Men can now. And, and I mean, this is a oh, this is a yeah. this is a, I don't know if you knew about that. Uh, if you yeah. want to look it up, it's always it's every, it was everywhere last week or so. Yeah. And 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 they did it thinking they're doing a wonderful thing to accommodate this half of a percent of people who might have the problem and probably need to be uh, uh, have, have therapy yeah. to to avoid it. Well, we don't have enough room on the third third floor psych units to take care of the people that are doing this total insane, ridiculous stuff. Um, anybody who's that confused about who they are, anybody who's totally lost touch with reality, uh, thinking that there's someone who they're not or that they're a, a woman, uh, you know, real women do not need surgery to make them real women. Real women are actually real women from the giddy up <laughs> and they don't need to go through hormone right. therapy and surgery. Right. So uh, that gives you a level of the insanity of which we're dealing with here. But the the media and and politicians now are also. I mean, um, Kamala Harris was introduced uh, at a town hall a couple of weeks ago, and she when she came up, she they introduced her. And she came up and she said to whoever the host was, "My my pronouns are her and her, uh, she and her, or well, I don't know what was yeah. she, whatever she said." But and yeah. and everybody thought that was wonderful. Yeah, well, you see, they're trying to all buy votes. Everybody's so afraid of the LGBT. I mean, people are just quivering in their boots if they, you know, get a pronoun wrong or if they say, you know, if, they, if I call Bruce Jenner, Bruce Jenner, a he, instead of Caitlyn Jenner, a she, I mean, give me a break. Bruce Jenner's a man dressing up in a dress claiming to be a woman. And, you know, he has the right to do that just as I have a right to say he's a man in a dress. Now, uh, and I want to say, for people who tune in late, we're talking to Walt Heyer, and Walt uh, w was a man, uh, did a uh, transgender transition to a woman and back again. So you've lived this. You're, you're, not, this, you're not talking about this from outside. You're, you've been in there. Yeah, you don't change. You, you don't become a woman. That's, that's what I learned. I lived it for eight years. You don't really change. This is like... Halloween all over again. You dress up, play the role, act as if you change. You do cosmetic surgery to make it look like you change. It is categorically, medically, <laughs> biologically, and every other way impossible and to change a man into a woman. It doesn't happen. And it's insane, and I'm out of time, Walt, and uh, I, I hope we can uh, have you as our go-to guy on this subject because I can't think of anybody better to talk to about this than you. I really appreciate you doing this. I'm here for you. All right, thank you. That's Walt Heyer, and we will be back in just a minute. We're going to talk about Medicare for All and Bernie Sanders, and uh, there's some insanity going on there, too. We'll talk to somebody who's going to tell you just how insane it is. Stick around. With SRN News, I'm Keith Peters in Washington. Senator Elizabeth Warren is drawing fire from friend and foe alike after releasing her plan to provide Medicare for All 
without a tax hike on the middle class. Not only does Republican Senator Ben Sass call Warren's math make-believe, a spokesman for the Biden campaign says it amounts to mathematical gymnastics, that raising more than $20 trillion in new federal spending won't happen without a tax hike. Warren says her plan would manage it by several means. They include redirecting $6 trillion from state and local governments back into Medicare, imposing a wealth tax, increasing IRS enforcement powers to collect more revenues, and taxing individuals on the money they save under her plan. Bob Agnew reporting. On Wall Street, a good day as the Dow was up by 301 points. NASDAQ rose 94, the S&P advanced 29, and crude oil up $2.02 to 56.20 a barrel. This is SRN News. Sebastian Gorka here for Relief Factor, the 100% drug-free supplement that was formulated by doctors to help your body deal with inflammation and pain. The reason I've told so many of my friends about the three-week quick start is because as we get older, occasional aches and pains can be a real problem, keeping you from sleeping through the night or doing the things you love and need to do, like taking walks or playing golf, going up or downstairs, or simply playing with your kids or grandkids. Tens of thousands are now like me, glad they ordered the three-week quick start for just nineteen ninety-five. After years of back pain, I found relief, and I believe you could too. Folks, this is why the father and son owners of Relief Factor, Pete and Seth Talbot, created the three-week quick start, and they discounted it to only nineteen ninety-five. Approximately 70% of those who order it go on to order more. Let's see if we can get you out of pain too. Go to relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com, or call 800-500-8384. Let's face it, we love Alexa, and we love to let her find your favorite radio station. This one, of course. We love it, too, when she finds us. But she could find us easier if we taught her a simple skill. To get started, simply say, Alexa, enable the answer Pittsburgh skill. After she confirms, you can then say, Alexa, play the answer Pittsburgh. That's all you have to do, and Alexa will learn how to find us. You can listen to us through your Amazon Echo, Echo Show, Echo Dot, and Amazon Tap devices. Alexa, what is your favorite radio station? That's easy. AM 1250, the answer. Don't be at a disadvantage when it comes to your Medicare coverage. Open enrollment ends December 7th, and you have some important decisions to make today. This is John Steigerwald. Medicare is confusing. Todd Marley and the experts at Marley Financial know you have questions, and they have the answers you're looking for. Before you lock in for another year, are you sure you're getting the best coverage possible? Visit MarleyFG.com and find out for yourself. Do you hold Pat for another year? Has your Advantage plan changed terms on you? What premiums are going up next year, and how much? Should you switch your Part D prescription plan or drop it all together? Don't go it alone. Let Marley Financial steer you to a comprehensive solution that lets you access any hospital or doctor you want. A plan that focuses not not just on cost, but quality, with lower deductibles and co-pays that are little to none. Why get stuck paying thousands in out-of-pocket expenses? Call 724-884-1496 today. 724-884-1496 or visit them at MarleyFG.com. That's MarleyFG.com. Are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? Posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. If you want to find the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all the top job sites. And now you can. With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 100 plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll in to ZipRecruiter's easy to use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 400,000 businesses. And right now, listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash America. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash America. One more time. To try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash America. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. Pretty much all the major highways really busy and inbound Parkway East. We've got an accident at Edgewood Swiss Vale. You're jammed up from 791 down to that point. There's some traffic stoppages because of that crash scene. Also, on the outbound side, stack up Forbes Avenue to Edgewood Swiss Vale. Parkway West, that's crawling along inbound Carnegie to the Fort Pitt Tunnel. Outbound Banksville Road to Carnegie. That's a look at traffic. I'm Jenny Robinson. AM 1250, the answer. Weather. 
Turning out clear and very cold for tonight, dropping down to a low of 26 degrees. The record low was 25. That was last reached back in 1905. For tomorrow, sunshine will give way to an increase in clouds, high 49. A stray shower for the evening hours tomorrow night, low 31. And for Sunday, intervals of clouds and sunshine and chilly, 44 degrees. With Iraqi weather forecast, meteorologist Danielle Niddle. Well, it's been kind of fun to watch the lunatics who are running for president uh, for the in the Democratic Party to try to outdo each other by seeing, uh, you know, who can offer the the most free stuff, uh, free college, free health care. I'm still holding out for free shoes here, maybe free pants uh, before I throw my support behind any of them. Uh, the big thing, of course, is free health insurance, single payer. Bernie Sanders has been screaming about it for years. Elizabeth Warren came out with her plan for paying for it. Uh, President, CEO, and Thomas H. Smith Fellow in Health Care Policy at the Pacific Research Institute. She's also also the author of the book, The False Promise of Single Payer Health Care, and she joins us now. Thanks for being here, Sally. Well, thank you so much for having me on. And health care, I think, is going to be definitely the number one uh, a policy issue in domestic policy issue in the upcoming election. Yeah. And certainly when you look at what's going on today, you, it's nonstop. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to get to um, Elizabeth Warren's plan in a minute here, but uh, Bernie Sanders is out there saying that the uh, U.S. health care system is dysfunctional and cruel. Uh, I think you disagree with that. Well, absolutely. Bernie Sanders has been talking about um, single payer health care for, for many years, but it's only been in the last couple of years that people have actually been paying attention. And certainly when he was running against Hillary Clinton for the Democratic nomination for president, that was one of his, his main issues. Then, of course, in 2017, in the Senate, he had a Medicare for All bill. 2019, he had another Medicare for All bill with uh, 16 co sponsors, including Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris and Cory Booker. Uh, you know, in the in the today in the in the um, in the debates and in the um, race, we have two people who are um, actually now only for single payer Medicare for all. Matt Senator Sanders and Senator Elizabeth Warren. The others, um, uh, South Bend Mayor Buttigieg, um, Kamala Harris, the senator from California, and Cory Booker. They're all moving. Joe Biden. They've all moved away from Medicare for all single payer to, well, let's um, bring in a public option, i.e. a government insurance plan that would compete in the market against private insurers. And for anyone who's been looking at this in a deep way like I have, what it'll mean is that the public option, the government option, will be priced cheaper than what the private insurers can offer coverage, and therefore private insurers will be crowded out, and then we will all be left with Medicare for all. It's a stepping stone approach to single payer. And even Buttigieg has said that that, that, that could happen. But uh, Bernie is, actually I was watching the debate, the last debate, it was about two weeks after he'd had his emergency heart surgery, which he got immediately. If he were in Canada, he wouldn't have. Um, and he was so, um, you know, just aggressive about single payer and so committed to it. I thought he might blow one of his stents. He was just <laughs> on a rage. But it is that Sanders and Warren are the two battling it out on the extreme progressive left for a complete government takeover of our health care system. So, so how long would Bernie have had to wait in Canada or UK for um, for this, the heart uh, procedure that he had done a couple weeks ago? Well, so because he had an emergency situation, so if, if he were in Canada, he would have to wait a minimum of three weeks, even when it's considered, you know, an emergency situation. So, you know, he may not have, have survived long enough to, you know, have the surgery. And in, in the UK, these weights are are similar so so people are dying in canada and the uk uh in, in situations where the only reason they're dead right now is because they had to wait longer than they should have to have the procedure that would have saved their lives exactly and you know when he talks about you know our health care system being dysfunctional in fact a single payer system is dysfunctional and what he wants in getting rid of all private insurance and putting everyone in a government plan where there'd be no deductibles, no co-pays, no referrals, all of these things, very, very expensive, would lead to a doctor shortage, which we're already seeing, higher taxes, which he has admitted to, and, um, you know, ration care and long, long wait in the U.K., um, a couple of months ago, there were, um, four million people were on the waiting list for procedures. In wow. Canada, at the end of 2018, 
the average wage from seeing a primary care specialist to getting treatment by a specialist is just under uh, 20 weeks or five months at 19.8 weeks. And I'm Canadian. I know, as a, you know, you probably know my own mother died from colon cancer because she was on the waiting list and couldn't get a colonoscopy uh, because there were too many younger people um, who were ahead of her who had serious issues who needed colonoscopy. So the, Bernie's, what Bernie is talking about for the American people would be all private insurance away would just be a disaster for this country. Yeah, no, just a quick uh, personal story. I was in a car accident uh, three months ago, and um, the airbag, uh, and the side airbag went off and blew out my uh, my hearing in my left ear, which I had already been wearing hearing aids. Uh, and I went back to, I, I was having issues, and I, I went to the audiologist, you know, the people who sell the hearing aids, and they tried to fix right. it, and they said, "Well, I, I, she said, I got to send you the. Uh, I can't. I can't. Uh, I don't want to go any further with this. You need to go see the the ear specialist." And um, I went there later that afternoon. What would be the chances of that happening in Canada or UK? Well, it absolutely wouldn't. I'm saying, you know, with a waiting time in 2018 of almost five months from seeing a primary care doctor to getting treatment by a specialist you would probably, you know, have to wait about five months. The thing is that you couldn't even go to a nearest specialist. First, you have to go to a, a primary care doctor who would then, you know, work to get you an appointment with a specialist. But you would probably have to wait about five months. My friend's um, a former a medical doctor, he retired at 40 from medicine in Canada because he was so upset that he had to see 60 patients a day. Mm -hmm. He couldn't get the tests for his patients. And so he, he retired uh, early. And he, but he's just absolutely appalled. Um, at the weights. In fact, you know, as a retired doctor, um, you know, he wanted to go and, you know, go to the dermatologist and have a checkup. He had some things on his face. He had to wait one year wow. to get an appointment as a, as a former, um, as a former medical doctor, one year to get an appointment with a dermatologist. And it turned out that a few of the things that were on his back and his face actually were cancers. If he'd been able to get the appointment when he needed it, this would reduce the cost of health care. And, and increase his chances of not getting skin cancer. Wow. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know of a, uh, I have property up in Canada, and I, it's in a small town, and the people have told me, I haven't seen it myself, but the people told me that the, the doctor, the, the primary physician in town, I think there, there were only two, there may only be one now, it's a town of about 15,000 people. He has a sign in his office that says, please limit your uh, issues to three when you see the doctor, it's because um, the doctors, there's just such a wait for just to see the doctor that when people get a chance to see the doctor, they start telling them their whole life story and they want to be treated for everything. And that it, the, the, the guy just can't treat everybody. Right, well, and that's actually, uh, three three issues is interesting because actually they, the, the government um, passed um, 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 a bill saying that people could only ish deal with one issue well, that, at a time. Well, this was a while ago, so, yeah. Yeah, well, now it's down to one because, you know, you can only see the doctor for 15 minutes. If you have issue number two and number three, you have to book a se separate appointment and you have to wait. I mean, it's, you know, the, the American people have no idea what it would mean. But let's take a look. If they took a look at the Veterans Administration that has been mm -hmm. in the news a lot in the last years, that is a single-payer system. And look at the way our vets don't have access to the latest drugs. They're on long waiting lists for care. Many expanded if we get what Bernie and Elizabeth Warren yeah. uh, want for this country. Well, um, so what is the response from people like Bernie and Elizabeth Warren, uh, whose plan uh, we'll get to in just a second here, uh, what, what, what is the response from these people who support this when you tell them about this, uh, the, the horror stories in Canada and the U.K.? Well, I think they just don't really care. They believe that health care is a right. Everyone has a right to the very best health care. And they just, you know, pretend that these things don't, don't exist. They know they exist and that, that, that they're, 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 these things happen. But they, you know, Bernie says, oh, the Canadians have the very best health care and it's absolutely free. Well, he never says that the average Canadian family today pays $13,311 a year in hidden taxes for a health care system where they have to wait. He has to know this, but he just is so committed to his progressive idea, along with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Elizabeth Warren and some of these others, that, that he, the truth isn't, isn't part of it. It's, it's a total commitment to a socialist takeover of our healthcare system.
Well, Elizabeth Warren uh, came out today and said her plan would cost $52 trillion. I don't know. I think it's over 10 years, whatever. And it, it, would, it would not mean a tax increase on the middle class. And that includes, by the way, uh, long-term care. So I guess I, when that comes time for them to take me away to the home, uh, that's going to be paid for, too. Uh, well, you know, uh, Senator Sanders, you know, has said, and Elizabeth Warren, that their plan would actually be more con- comprehensive than Canada's because they would add free dental, free hearing, free long-term care, and also um, a maximum out-of-pocket for drug- prescription drugs of $200. So this would mean that our weights would be um, even even longer. So uh, Mrs. Warren says, yes, there wouldn't be, you know, she, she's been hedging the issue about how much would her plan cost. So finally today, having worked with Don Berwick, who is a big supporter of Dr. Don Berwick of the National Health Service and, and single payer health care, um, uh, 52 trillion over 10 years. When you take all the other things out, it's down to 20.5 trillion. But she says, well, we're going to pay for this with, you know, taxing the w- wealthy uh, people earning over families earning over one million dollars uh, a year with a 0.38 percent tax increase, a six percent increase on billionaires, a new nine percent employer payroll tax. The, you know, employees are going to be paying this payroll tax. So this is a tax on the middle middle class. She just is trying to make it somewhere else, make out that it isn't. But it is a tax um, on the middle class because employees will be paying that tax through their employer. She wants to raise corporate taxes, destroy the incentive for business, tax Wall Street, destroy the, you know, the fact that many, most Americans have invested in the stock market through their 401ks. So she really, she, there's just no way that we, that we can have Medicare for all without a huge tax increase doctor shortage, long wait. We're talking to Sally Pipe. She's the author of The False Promise of Single-Payer Health Care. Um, do, do all the plans, as you said, shift the cost from the worker to the employer, which, you know, which means less money? As you said, it's just a tax anyway. Um, you, right. All, yeah, it's you know, the only no other way to do it. There isn't, and corporations don't, when they say, well, we're going to put the corporate tax rate back to 35% from the 21%. And if you look at the job numbers today. I mean, even though we have the GM strike in this country, yep. the job numbers are terrific. The stock market is booming. And corporations don't pay taxes. People pay taxes. Corporations, if they get a tax increase, you know, we, we pay for that in increased uh, prices for goods and services. Yep. So she's telling the American people, and we need to explain to the American people what exactly it is that she's talking about and Bernie Sanders uh, because there, if, if we get this plan, just like in Canada, where Canada the government will only have 11% of course, domestic product and health care. That's why we have long weights and ration care. In the U.S., the cost is going to be out of control even more probably than Sanders' 30 to $40 trillion over 10 years or her $20.5 trillion over 10 years. Um, it's just going to be um, a disaster in terms of innovation, the new treatments. All of these things take place in America. They don't take place in countries like Canada, France, Britain, where these countries have price controls. We are the leaders in innovation and the greatest uh, treatments. You don't hear much about the effect of the government takeover on what kind of money the doctors and other people who work in the medical... medical. Yesterday, um, Senator Warren came out and said, well, you know, there would be a reduction um, of two million, a loss of two million jobs in the healthcare sector. One million would be a reduction in people, administrators working in the health insurance industry. The other would be one million doctors and hospitals who would lose their jobs. And of course, you know, this will further lead to the doctor shortage and the fact that do- under Bernie's plan and her plan, doctors are going to be paid 40% below what they get paid for treating patients today. Their rates would be tied to Medicare rates. So many more would retire. And the other fact is that, in my view, the best and brightest young people in this country that have traditionally gone into medicine are not going to go into medicine yep. when basically they're going to be union members. How, what kind of medicine they practice and how will be determined by government. It's just going to be, you know, lead to a downgrading of our health care. Yeah, and I'm out, I'm about out of time here, but uh, real quick, about 30 seconds or so, would we all be better off if the government got completely out of the health insurance business? I know that's not enough time to answer that, but if you could try. Well, that would be, that would be you know, my idea. And we're certainly seeing under President Trump, you know, with the um, short-term limited duration plans, 
association health plans expanding um, who can put money in and how much into health savings accounts, health reimbursement accounts. These are all things that are opening up the market, but people on the left, the progressives, want to give fewer opportunities, and we need to open up the market and lead to a much greater uh, free market, competitive market in healthcare. Universal choice will lead to universal coverage. Sally Pipes, author of The False Promise of Single-Payer Healthcare. Thanks a lot for being here. Oh, thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Packages for a living? A gas-powered Mercedes-Benz Sprinter delivers. Transport people? A Sprinter van with 0% financing is a five-star idea. If food delivery is your thing, then a gas Sprinter caters to you. And if you're a general contractor, the Sprinter with 0% financing nails it. With innovation, safety, and technology, Sprinter is built for you. And it's built for your bottom line with 0% financing. The Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, starting at just $33,790. And for a limited time with IRS Section 179, you could be eligible eligible for up to a $25,000 tax deduction. Gas engine, 0% financing, and a possible tax deduction? Now that's a Sprinter that delivers. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to run. MSRP excludes all options, tax, the title, registration, transportation, charge, and dealer prep fee. Options, model availability, and actual dealer price may vary. See dealer for details about costs and terms. Only valid on 2018 or 2019 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter vans, excluding cap chassis. Qualified commercial customers only. Financing offer valid through January 2, 2020. Consult your tax advisor. For more information, limits may apply. Visit mbvans.com. Hi, this is Rhett Rasmussen of besthotgrill.com. Not only do we have great grills, but also the best hot patio heaters. We are the nationwide distributor for Bromic Radiant Patio Heaters, the very best patio heater that you can get. The Bromic heaters use the same radiant burner technology as our Solaire infrared grills, so they heat up fast and keep you warm so you can enjoy your backyard grill and outdoor living spaces into the night and all year round. Bromic heaters have stylish contemporary designs that fit perfectly in backyard and restaurant patios. We have gas and electric models to suit most installation needs and a portable gas heater that directs the heat where you want it, not the bushes and walls like the mushroom heaters. For top quality performance and aesthetics, you want Bromic Radiant Patio Heaters and Solaire Infrared Grills. Learn about these amazing grills and heaters at besthotgrill.com. That's besthotgrill.com, besthotgrill.com. This is the entertainment answer. What is on our Oscar radar this week? Well, it's the new biopic, Harriet, from Focus Features. It's the extraordinary tale of Harriet Tubman escape from slavery and transformation into one of America's greatest heroes. Her courage, ingenuity, tenacity, all freed hundreds slaves and change the course of history. These inspirational stories are so important to me, especially in today's climate. Look for Harriet in theaters, rated PG-13. For this entertainment answer, I'm Matt Mungle. Hey Mike, how's the house coming along? <sighs> Needs a ton of work. The pipes are leaking. Needs a new roof. The AC just broke. I just don't have time to do it all myself. You know anyone? Oh, just ask Home Advisor. They match you with the best local pros for any home project. Cool. Yeah, you can rely. What's it cost? Actually, Home Advisor is always free to use. Nice. I'll check it out. Go to homeadvisor.com or download the free app. Home Advisor. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's. So thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 3388 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 3388. Enjoy. The John Steigerwall Show, AM 1250, The Answer. Well, you might have noticed that uh, I think, what is it, about half the state of California is on fire right now. Um, and uh, they're just the, the, the state is a total and complete mess run by Democrats. And it's, uh, 
Um, it isn't going to get any better. And I, I don't understand why anybody, anybody who doesn't live in California now would say, I think I'm going to move to California. But here's an interesting story. This is your government at work. California Proposition 47 was passed five years ago. And what it does is uh, it makes it only a misdemeanor if you are caught shoplifting and or stealing anything that's less than $950 in value. So guess what's happening out there? Yeah, they're, uh, it's becoming a lifestyle because, uh, for us, this is what the an owner of a, a convenience store says, because um, all they're doing is just watching people steal things, and there's nothing they can do about it. And also, black market dealers are crossing state lines because they know California will go easy on them if they get caught. So they go in, and they this this is what this uh, this woman uh, named Michelin. I didn't see her first name here, but uh, they know what they're doing. Oh, it's Rachel Michelin. She's the president of California Retailers Association. They know what they're doing. They will bring in calculators and get all the way up to the nine hundred and fifty dollar limit. And one person will go into the store, fill up their backpack, come out, dump it out, and go right back in and do it all over again. And so people are surprised that if you you know put up a sign in front of every store, by the way, just so you know, you can steal anything up to $950 here, and they're not going to prosecute you. Uh, and they're also what they're doing is they're getting... Uh, many out-of-state crime rings use children to do their dirty work because they know they're low on the total totem pole of prosecutions. So that's what they're doing out there in California. And the mayor of San Francisco, where it's where it's worse than anywhere else, uh, London Breed was contacted by Fox News multiple times to be asked about this. Surprisingly, no response. There you go. So get. Uh, Head for California, the land of milk and honey, and idiots, idiots running the state, and it's a absolute, total, and complete nightmare. The city of Cal, the state of California, have a nice time out there. Bye. The John Steigerwall Show is a production of AM 1250, The Answer, and Salem Media Group. They blow into town with the wind, rain, and hail. An out-of-town storm chaser.